Nigel, are you beating the drum? Are you beating the drum and are you going to ring the bell as well? Nigel is beating the drum, but I can't hear Nigel. Okay, Nigel, I, I, I hear you, but I'm not hearing the drum. I'm not sure why. That's a good thing. Let me get a bell. Let me get a bell. Yeah, get a bell, man, Nigel. Ring. Can you hear the school bell ringing? All right. So the the bell, the bell will, the bell, okay. I'm you don't hear my bell? I'm trying to play technician at the same time. Well, you don't hear my bell? Oh, okay, oh. yes. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to do so many things there at the same time, Nigel. Um, but I'm getting assistance now, so let us ensure that everything is ready because we cannot keep Marjo waiting. I know I have a little a demerit for her this morning, but um, she may just give us a detention. <laughs> that will be all part of it, you know. I mean, for those of us who haven't received one for a while, then you know, we'll 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 know what it feels like to get that again. But ah. I don't think, I don't think ah, I've seen everybody now. Hey, I see you in our glory. I, I see you in all your splendor now. <laughs> hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. Now I'm seeing you. You, uh, you didn't hear my bell? Yes, I heard the bell. I heard the bell. I heard the bell. I heard the bell. Okay. All right. All right. School start. School start. Yes. I'm in class. It is surely a pleasure to welcome Miss Cecilia Nicholas to Connecting the Dots. She always has this warm smile, as I said, eh? and um, this is a no-nonsense lady. So let me go to the studio to say good morning, Majo. Good morning, Ivona. Good morning, Mr. Francis. Good morning, Mr. listeners. Francis. You notice she said I, I was going to get a demerit or whatever this morning because I was a little bit late. Yes, this is just uncharacteristic of me, but you know, things do happen, and I apologize for that. You, you look lovely. Thank you. Care to explain your attire? Well, the thing is that, as I said in my life, I've had many wins and angels from the time I was born. And uh, my friends, we have sustained our friendships. Mm -hmm. And one of them is Sonia Agpa. Mm. And what you see on me, that is Sonia's creation. What I have in my neck is a gift to me from her. And my earrings are a gift from my grandmother. Oh. So, Nigel, wow. you're seeing her, right? Beautiful yes, as I'm always. Yes, I'm seeing her, looking in all her splendor. Good morning to you again. Thank you, Nigel. And Mrs. Nicholas, Naju, Celia, all the other different names you go by. Yes. And, of course, um, Sonia, good morning. Thanks for making her look pretty as she always is. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. But, Maggio, the dress. I mean, tell me about the dress. I, I like the Assam. Yes. I like well, the Assam. Yes, well, you see, the thing is that every time I... I don't know, it seems I have a pressure for African material, and African material loves me. And um, Sonia Agpo is a very good seamstress. She sews very well for me and for others, but others feel that I get a special touch, but they don't know where that special touch comes from, mm. from long ago. Right. We have been friends. Okay, so Sonia Agpa, she's one of those I have on my list. We have to speak with her as well, yes, Nigel. I did not know that. she was a seamstress. Yeah, she is. She, yes. is. she learned yes. from her mother, and ah. she has developed it to a skill. Yeah. Okay. So it's nice to have you, Nigel. Thank you want to start? You want to start? Go ahead, but, Matt. But, but, but of course, I mean, you know, we have to start with from the very beginning where it all started and all the rest of it. So, um, you know, just give us a general idea, though, in terms of, like, back then, like, what part of Dominica are you from? Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll go through the school, you know, your school journey and so on. But which area of Dominica are you from? Okay, Nigel, in the heart of Rosu. And your mother knows that street very well, and you too, yes. because oh, yes. she used to congregate in a little house by Ursula and Agatha. That was a butcher or just a house? Boy, a house oh. for everybody, for okay. everybody. I know the houses mm -hmm. back then, especially in that area, we had like butchams. No, so no, I no. Just and get a we picture. had to walk in the little road oh, okay. to get our coconut cheese in and the our way. tambourine <laughs> ball, etc. So Naira knows that as well. So I was very born well. mm -hmm. 73 Cox Street, higher up. Closer to to um, the the Boston's there, our property okay. is still there. Properties are still there. I was fortunate in that I was one of the babies who was born at home, but saved because um, it was diagnosed that either my, me 
or my mother would die, or both of us. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Wati, deceased, bless his soul, he had just come back to Dominica and was friends with the family. And he came home and he did what he had to do. And I'm here today because of his skillful and expertise. And I think, too, it was care and concern, you know, that dominated the situation. And when, while he was alive, every time I would go close to him, he would just nudge me, just move away from me, making me feel too old. I say, move away from me, making me too old. I say, well, you just have to take it, you know. And we became <laughs> friends. Mm -hmm. We were friends. And I'm his children. We were friends, Susan and myself, you know and his wife and we stayed close until his death and um from well my grandparents one was from kulibi street mrs agatha frank and um many people say i have her characteristics because what you see that's what you get and we'll finish with you and my grandmother my maternal grandmother cinderella mm -hmm. would you believe her name was cinderella, cinderella. yes cinderella yes. And they really, they were in um, Shawford Estate. They worked on the Shawford Estate. As a matter of fact, she was a half Carib. So I always say, when the vexation come out, I don't want to say anything. You know, I'm a history person. Mm. And then I remember I have a friend <laughs> in Trinidad, and she looked at my eyes, and she said to me one day, you look like a Chinese, you know, you have Chinese blood. I said, ah, not Chinese blood, I have. Carib blood I have in me, you know? <laughs> And um, Kalinago blood flows all through, your through veins. all through. And the thing is that she was characteristic of it. She had the hair and everything. Mm -hmm. But my grandfather, her husband, who was from Monstrat, mm -hmm. Mead, she went to Mead. She, they always used to say, well, they take the hard hair. Mm -hmm. But I have a distant, uh, my, the third generation, she took all the Caribbean from my, grand, from my grandmother. So my grandparents. And my grandfathers, unfortunately, I did not know them. They, I just heard of them, know of them, because they died before I was born. One of them is Mr. Joseph. He was in charge of the Carb Cinema at the time. And Mr. Baptist, this is Mr. Baptist. I remember he said, every time I see you, I see you, your grandfather walking in front of me. You know, I remember once I was walking up to the grammar school and he was sitting, sitting, and I said, well, okay. nobody can be sitting me for me to turn around. And eventually he said, Miss Joseph. And I said, but that's Mr. Baptist's voice. And when I turned around, so he wouldn't turn around. I said, well, you taught me, you know, because mm -hmm. he's my father's good friend. That, that we're not sick here, we're not birds. Hmm. And then he said, child, I'm just <laughs> okay, seeing you. your grandfather incarnate in front of wow. me, you know? And from, well, I went to, at two years, I went to Miss Rose preschool. At the age of two? At two. At two, I went to school. Mm -hmm. At two, I went. Because my mother was a teacher at the St. Martin School, but she was fast with herself, and she got me. And you know what that meant in those days, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went to school at two, teacher Rose School. One of her proud students before she died, Jennifer Wallace was one of them too, Lucia Blair's. She was so proud of us. I mean, we kept close to her. And I mean, at that school, it, we were two. But that was chronological age was not important for her. It was a matter you're here to learn. And you remember these things? Even yes, I do remember. And years. even from then, we had our shows. Eh? It's not a matter of dropping papers on the, on the floor and having your little snack and leaving it there and turning around. No, each person had her, because at that time it was only girls. I remember her son was there, but I don't have any recollection of another male being at that school. I may be wrong, but I remember her son was part of us. And we did our shows, and it was like a whole day thing. So we were brought there early. And when she decided to send us home, that's when we went home or when they came first. So sometimes when they came first, she'd say, I'm there not ready yet, you know. But remember, I just live in 73 Cox with Lucia was in Pong. Jennifer was just across. So it was not a problem for us. And then I moved on to the St. Martin Primary School. I had a little break there because I, at that time, I don't know if people remember very well, but there was a federation. But even um, before you went, you go on to that, though, how did you live the, 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 the preschool? Was it like a little graduation ceremony at the time? Yes, because at the time, remember, when you got to 
three or four, five years, mm -hmm. then it was automatic that you would go to a primary school. So there was a ceremony then, back yeah, then? Not really a okay. ceremony, you know, but a little thing, you know okay. what I mean? Not the graduation as we have it today. With oh yes, with pomp and, and circumstance. And dinner and whatever the case may be. Should have a little party before, so a little big, so a little squash mm -hmm. and the uh, milk buns. You know what I mean? What um, um, Eric's used to sell at the time, turnover, mm. you know, that sort mm. of thing. And of Cut course, flap. We, we, right, we shed our little tears, you know. But she made sure, and remember, she was a guider, yeah? Mm -hmm. She was a guider. She dealt with the um, ranger. She dealt with the, um, mm -hmm. the little ones, etc. So we had to go almost every week. We had to visit Teacher Rose. And we would meet her in church, too, because we had to be at church. And from there to the St. Martin School. I had a break. We, because my mother, of course, with all her skill as a teacher, um, Miss Allfree and Miss Moyer James. Which Allfree? Felicia and Allfree? Yes, Felicia okay. and Allfree. These two individuals, they had gotten, well, whatever process they used at the time, they were going to Trinidad to work in the Federation, the government, Federation government. And my mother lived in Jersey because at the time, Miss Alfre, she had her newspaper too. She had started a newspaper at the time. And Mrs. Moya James was a friend of the family, of the area. I mean, once you're living in Bath Road, River Street, um, Cork Street, Hillsborough Street, that was the little clique. And they went and they took my mother up to be their secretary in Trinidad. So I left at some stage and I went to Trinidad where I went to the Belmont Catholic School in Trinidad. But then at the time, so many things were happening in Trinidad. And my father decided, send back his daughter to Dominica. Send back his daughter to Dominica. <laughs> so I came back, back to the St. Martin School, and then to the convent high school. Mm -hmm. From the convent, well, at the convent high school at the time, we went up to sixth form. It was a matter of um, state college. And then, fortunately for me, from the convent high school, I went to UWE. University of the West Indies to pursue a degree in history and social sciences. And I continued with UWE. As a matter of fact, I'm a graduate of all three campuses and um, went on to do an international relations in St. Augustine, went on to do education, supervision, curriculum, etc. And um, was crowned it, crowned it all was, well, I did my master's with Leicester University. That was a program that the Ministry of Education initiated for the secondary school's principal. So 24 or 14 of us were selected to do that pro program. And after completing that program, well, two or three of us, we offered Mrs. Dublin and others, we offered to do a doctorate degree with them. But none of us took it on. Well, for me at the time, um, one, my daughter had expressed an interest in medicine, and you know how expensive that is, and being taught that you do not rely on others for what you need, but you provide for yourself, I decided to not to take up the program. Our friends in the other countries, they did because you could have gone up for a week, come back, a weekend, you know, that sort of thing. But because with our connection, if international airports, et cetera, it was not possible for us to do it. So that just went. But I mean, just getting selected to do a doctoral degree was, a very, was of importance to me. I, my father never, he died, he never forgave me for that because he said, you could have come to me. And whatever it is, we could have fixed it up. But I'm a big woman, I have to do what I have to do. And uh, other courses that I've done in trade unionism, gender affairs, women affairs, even breastfeeding. I have a certificate in breastfeeding, assisted mothers at the hospital, and myself too with Dr. Sorendo. And what I'm doing now, as I'm retired, I'm giving it, giving it my full attention now. I do a lot of church work. So I'm part of an evangelization team handed by so. Father Charles Martin. And we have one of our Sharon with us. So we do our evangelization over the weekends. And I, through the efforts of Mrs. Blah, 
Ramona Bla. I did a program with her of, of child protection. And at the time, we were looking at the all the different laws we had related to the children. They were so disconnected. So I was part of that committee. And at the end of it, a few of us were selected to do a court um, mediation program associated with the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. So I'm a certified mediator just from since 2005, one of the few. And we deal with court matters, of course, supervised by the courts. And with my church work, I still, I'm a lay associate in pastoral care. So we assist the, the priests when there are no masses. So we go on to share with them. And we are commentating and the rest of it. But of course, I still keep links with the Dominican Association of Teachers. And Wahoo right now, you know, my good friend Curtis has passed and his son he has decided to start a foundation for him. So I'm part of that foundation. He enlisted us to be advisors to him. But at the last meeting, he said, who'd like, like Miss Baptist and myself, said, would like us to be on the board. So we're there. And my school, of course, I still have links with my school, still keep in touch with them. My friends overseas, we still keep in touch. Caribbean Union of Teachers, Catholic Teachers Association, World Teachers Association, and of course NEA, that is the North um, um, Education Association of the United States of America, I, AFT, and all our Caribbean associates. Nigel, Nigel, Nigel. You ask a question and Celia Nicholas answered you. And well, uh, she and put I it in chronological think, order as well. Yes. This yes, is what you call you an educator par excellence. So you understand why wow. you understand why education has been oh, yes. um, central to her mm -hmm. and to her whole being. So, I mean, you know, ah, I've been taking my notes, you oh, know, yes, so uh, I want to dissect, you know. So I, I know I know she'll be proud to know we've been taking notes. Oh, yes. That's important to any teacher, you know. Wow. So I want to go back a little bit, though, um, uh, Mrs. Nicholas, I want to go back a little bit to to the to, to where preschool. And the reason I'm going to go back there is because you said something where sometimes you know the parents would come and you and and and, and teachers would say they're not ready yet, mm -hmm. and there was no ob objection if you want to put it that way. So I'm trying to figure out in some way. Do you think that um, at that time in the society in the country, I mean, teachers had some kind of a certain level of hmm. um, respect and authority that allowed them to be able to do that without much objection from parents. Nigel, first thing I would like to address is you normally hear that it comes from teachers to educators that um, there has been the, the, the respect for teachers has been, I want to use the proper word, has not been what it used to be. And I fail to associate with this comment. For me, for me, respect breeds respect. And if you are an individual who you are very professional about what you do, and I always tell people, I do respect everyone, everyone. And I always encourage my students to do alike. And they will tell me, Miss, even the Akuras on the road? I said, yes, even the Akuras on the road. You respect because it's an individual. And I feel it's the way you conduct yourself and the way you go about not only people don't look at you, not only at the job. And I have to stress that because there are certain incidents you know, that have come up with me. People are looking at you and you don't even know that they are looking at you. Certain things you take for granted, people look at you and they make a perception of you. And I always tell individuals, people's perception is their truth. So yes, there was a lot of respect, as we normally say, for teachers in the society. And one of the things that I mean, one of the old teachers shared with me, a man, he said, you know, in the villages, um, some people couldn't, I mean, the rate of illiteracy was high. So the teacher was the one that everybody went to. 
And you know, some of those old teachers, they stole those people girlfriends and so, you know. So they were the ones who used to write the letters for them, read the letters for them. And of course, they would put in their little two pens and take out what they want from it, etc. So you found that people know they needed these individuals. And so they stayed close to them. And I must say, these people, they, they, they created community life for the individuals. And they assisted them. They assisted them. To me, I still feel it's the same. It depends on the individual and the environment. It depends on the individual. And there are many individuals who go through the teaching profession, I will say teachers know that, who I always tell them, if you cannot live it, L-I-V-E, leave it, L-E-A-V-E. -E, because you can see it on their mannerism, their deportment, and everything. <laughs> And individuals can read people. I still feel there's a great level of respect for educators, and even more so with the COVID <laughs> situation. When parents saw that their own children, they, cannot, they could not deal with them at home. And imagine teachers having to deal with these children on a day-to-day -day basis and in a classroom. There, there are still teachers who have a high level of motivation and who are ready to help children. Sometimes the children are not ready and we have to be patient with them. My staff at the Dominica Community High School, I couldn't ask for a better staff. You know, I mean, they know what I wanted from them. I was in a position when they were employed to interview them and to make the final selection. And they know when they came, they were very honest with me. For example, I remember Mr. Julian Elwa. He's deceased now. And I'm finding so many of the people who meant so, so much to me are in beyond. And sometimes it gets frightening, you know, because I'm not ready to go yet, God. And, you know, when he came to the community high school, he left banking. His parents were mad with him because at the time banking, there was more money in banking than teaching. And he came. Because, and he, you know what he said to me? He said, Miss, I saw you in operation somewhere. And there was just something about you. And he was in the preach in his church. You know, he was with the youth. And he said to me, I do not want to be a teacher. I want to be a lawyer. And he, 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 he lived dealing with one of the renowned cases in North America with the spill in Alaska, etc. Very successful. And I said to him, I said, Mr. Elwa, Okay, they used to call him Mali. You're going to come with me. How long are you going to stay with me? He said, well, maybe five, six years, etc." So I said, I want everything that you've got. And he gave me everything that I... And, you know, the children used to say, well, Majo not there, but Ma Majo there. Meaning that whatever <laughs> I would do, Mr. Elwa would do. And the same thing obtains for my present staff today. Some of them, I taught them. They came to community high school. I taught them. And they work hard for the children. Sometimes the, the level of support that you need for parents, you don't get it. Because when I look back, I mean, it's a matter that some of the individuals whose children we are now teaching, and I look back, I do a lot of research on my parents. And I see some of them, they had this trend, teenage pregnancy. So some of them were still finding themselves, and here they are to deal with a child. And sometimes without no support, because, I mean, in some families, you have disgrace, you know, you have brought down disgrace on the family, so you battle your canoe. And some of them is because they did not have the skills, and some of them is the circumstances under which they got pregnant. So I like that, Nigel. They saw I like the child, that. they saw the circumstances. I like that, because what Marjo is telling us is that... Um, when she looked at the behavior of some of the students at her school, she decided to go to the root cause of the problem. So she did her research on the parents. So you see this, Nigel? Yep. This yes, is important. Definitely. That connection this is important. has always been there, you know? By the way, let me so, just so, say that Vado is saying, um, hi, Vado said she could hardly wait for the guests to come on. She said this very, very early <laughs> Trust before. Vado. And a few other people <laughs> That's my that friend, well. Ship Street, where my father's business was. So you go way back. And her father and my father were very good friends. Mm. And we went to school together. All right. Yes, yes, Nigel, you were saying? No, I was just, I mean, in continuing with that particular thread. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard, um, you know, I've heard Mrs. Nicholas talk about very often... She seems to want to make a difference between teacher and educator. So I've heard you say when I say teacher or someone yeah. says teacher, you go back to the word educator. 
I mean, do you see in some way that there is a difference between just a teacher and an educator? For me, Nigel, an educator would look, you would find a teacher in an educator. If you have a very mm. good educator, you should find a teacher in an educator. Good. But sometimes you would not find an educator in a teacher. In I teachers. say that because there's some individuals that you remove them from the classroom and you have damaged them because they want to remain in the classroom with the children. They do not want to move out because, for example, in my case, and I would like to use this opportunity to make it clear, that every political administration with which I worked, that was when I came the Freedom Party, 90, Freedom Party, the Labour Party, the ULWP, now the Labour Party, all of these administrations offered me posts that I could have left the Dominica Community High School. I stayed at the Dominica Community High School. So from I'm using that to say, out from that point of view, from a pre teacher, administrator, then to be placed in the ministries to look at policies, administration, curriculum development, etc. I would consider that an educator. Let, let's just take a pin there because I think someone wants to say something. And by the way, Lauren Bannis, uh, good morning to you. Sending me a message. I'll read it in a short while. But we have someone on the line who wants to share something. Good morning. Well, I don't have the, the line to, to write, so I got a call. Mark Joe, Mr. Sincere Joseph Nicholas, was my teacher at high school. Mm -hmm. And my name is Glenda Bed Minister. She has instilled so much into me. And listening to her, I have to reach out today to tell her thank you. Mm -hmm. She pushed me to be where I am today. And today I have extended my education and become a so master's in social work. And listening to her brings tears to me because... This lady teaches every aspect of life, not only the classroom, but leaving etiquette. As she said, yourself, portraying yourself in the public gives everything about you. Mm -hmm. So Majo has instilled so much into me. I want to praise her and continue to praise her. My granddaughter was going, goes to community high school. And you should... Thank you. So Majo, Celia Joseph, that's Glenda Bed Minister. Yes, Thank I'm you. getting the Thank voice. You. Thank All right. You. Thank you yeah. as well. Thank you so Thank much. You. There's Thank another caller. Let's just take that other caller quickly. Good morning. Connecting the dots. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Good morning. Peace be on to you and yours. I'm calling to say um, I salute one of your teachers, or I can say educators. And I like what she said uh, if you don't, you have to live it. You have to like it to live it. That's, that's what you said. Hello? Yes, yes. yes. If you don't like yes. it, yes. live it yes. or leave yes. it. Right, right. And I totally agree with you because there are a lot of people in positions that they are just there for the money and not not to, to um, devote themselves, you know, not only in teaching but all over because you can see in, in, in different structures of, uh, of the workplace. So I salute you mm -hmm. and keep on doing the best. I hope to see you soon at church. I <laughs> know. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks she so much. Okay. Thanks for so calling. Lauren Bannis Roberts yes. is also saying that Mrs. Nicholas has contribu also contributed a lot to netball in Dominica, former <laughs> president of the Dominica Netball Association. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Nicholas. That's true. I was the you president forgot that. of you the Dominica that. Association, um, the Dominica Netball Association for three years. And, um, I dare to say that um, during that time, it, Mr. Maynard was the Minister for Sports. And if I remember correctly, that was the time Miss Bannis tried to rival me, you know, because, you know, I taught a netball, so she wanted to put me in the shade when she brought down the Canadians, etc. But that was the time that we had almost all the Caribbean countries, they okay. came down to Dominica for mm -hmm. netball. She also and said that your the, um, husband. Well, I taught her school and I taught her netball. She was the captain of of, mm -hmm. of our netball team in at the convent high school. Mm -hmm. And you know, later on, yes. we played netball. And she worked with your husband at the NBD. So That's a lot right. As well. Nigel, more calls this. I'm going to back to the... And I'm you going know, back this is one of the points the that I would like to bring up. Let's just take this caller quickly, Celia Nicholas, because people want to say, you know, something to you. Good morning. Okay, Good morning. You. I want to say a big thank you to, to um, Mrs. Nicholas. And, um, you know, there's a text of scripture that say, 
um, Apollos planted and Paul watered. Mm-hmm. And um, as you mentioned, Mali Elwa, I remember giving him a copy of the history, the foundation of the school. Um, I don't know if we still have that, and um, at any time I can lay my hand on one of these old copies as to the real founding members and how the school actually started and where Mm -hmm. it is today, Mm -hmm. you know? I don't know if you heard of the Rockefeller Brothers Foundation at the time, who were very instrumental, but to put it short, you have done an excellent and great job. And what I like most about what you just said Mm -hmm. is you had been given many offers to leave the school. You know, several administrations come and do that, but you were well-purposed, you were well-directed, you had great objective, not for yourself, but for what role and how you could assist the hundreds of students Mm -hmm. that were going to come for that school. That's Mr. John Felix Thomas speaking, a founding, well Member, to put it that way, one of us with together with Jean, Fino Kane, Miss Cecilia, Nicholas, you know, <clears throat> and Sylvia, um, Sylvia George, Mr. Desmond Blanchard, I remember those, pres- those, those, those persons. Rupert Sorrento. Uh, Rupert Rupert. Sorrento, Lance Rupert, um, Sinfair, um, Audit Claudette, Mondesi, Cuthbert um, Elwin, Cuthbert Elwin. Yeah. You know, and you know, these teachers, most of some of the teachers like Cuthbert or um, Elwin, the sis now, Claudette Mondesi, um, a lot of them, Ezra Dirample, had to work for actually, let, wait, let me say, basically, no pay, you know. But they were committed, they were committed. I remember at time having to raise funds to pay teachers and, and, and meet the running cost of the school was not an easy task. But I also have to give credit to persons like the deceased H.L. Christian, who once visited the school, and from there it started moving up with Mrs. I don't know if you remember Mrs. Egbert Charles. That yes. is oh. age, right? Yes. Yeah. She played a major, major role. At one stage, I just had to lend greater support to her. That one, what I'm going to say, is not the nicest of things, but it was the best thing. Where I said, Mrs. Charles, just call, call the register. Take the register. Call the children's name. And I sent practically all the children at the home, excepting eight children. And that included uh, Annie, George, um, Jolo, we used to call him Jolo, uh, Low Black, mm-hmm. and Marilyn Low Black, you know, and um, Karen Fingal. And we kept eight children at the school. And we said what we wanted is better to have a school of children who willing to learn and match up to it. But all the parents, you know, came back with the children, and from there with Miss Charles, and then you had, I think, Miss Tong, and the others that follow Mr. McMurray gave us a little stint in agriculture as well. But you have actually put the ice in to that cake, and I want to commend you and congratulate you. Enjoy your retirement, my dear. You have worked well. You have run that race. You have served well. May Yahweh bless okay. you, and may Yahweh bless you and your staff abundantly. abundantly. Thank, thank you, sweet. thank you, thank you. Let me just read quickly a message I'm getting as well. This person, I think, is in, in Maryland. She's saying, today's show is so inspiring. Miss Nicole has taught me at school, though being a very troubled child at school, her guidance, her teaching, her patience and love for my success has carried me through life for the many years i did not get the chance to say thank you thank you miss nicholas i don't think she knows me as winnie which is my pet name if you mention edwina she will know who i am yes and the, mr thomas mentioned about the fund rockefeller foundation yes and this is one of the things that i would like to express my thanks to the initiators of the Dominica community high school program because it was a thing that student well the number of places we had as secondary schools equated the number of children who passed the then common entrance. And it did not mean, and this is something that I would like people to understand, it did not mean that the children who came to the Dominica Community High School were less than. It's just that at the point in time, the opportunity was not there for them to come into a secondary school. And I mean to say the honest truth, leaving the convent high school and going to the community high school, it was, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> describe it. But at the time, you found that individuals, when I came back, actually, the Ministry of Education, my performance at UWE, they said where I should go to. 
And then, as he said, the school was going to be closed. And then I was asked, Dr. Polido had a great role to play in that, to go to the community high school and said mm -hmm. it was not going to be easy. Mr. Christian, Mr. Maynard, I remember every time something happened at the Dominica Community High School, I got this big card from Mr. Christian. Mm -hmm. I still have that Auntie Paul's father. I still have those mm -hmm. cards, you know, thanking me for what I am doing and what he wants. Because he could see that, remember, he was a social um, welfare officer, you know, and it, 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 it gladdened his heart to see that something was happening with those students. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of parents like Mrs. Mrs. Low Black, you know, Mrs. Julian, Mrs. Julian is still alive, who assisted me. Mrs. George, well, Mr. George is dead, but Mrs. Mrs. George from Salisbury, her children, three or four of her children to the school. And these people actually sold things at the market, you know, to give us to sell at the school. And up to, well, up to this day, up to the time that I left, we ran community high school by the writing of projects. Okay. So I would call myself an expert in oh. writing projects. Nigel, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the calls are coming, the messages are coming. You, you oh, are yes. there, right? I mean, you're, you're drinking some water I, I, and taking I, I, notes I'm still? right here, and, and, and that is what we expected in terms of wow. having someone like Mrs. Nicholas here as our guest. Oh, yes. I know her former students are always want to call and say thank you. you I know, tell you, they are calling. This Matthew. Rayburn yes. and all the others. Yes. I'm pretty sure they want to say that. Yes. So. In Go fact, ahead. as you mentioned, messages. as you mentioned, Curtis Matthew, I can remember when I was on the news desk on the sponsors with Curtis Matthew. Um, Curtis would always ensure that we go on time to every function of the Dominica Community High School. Every time Curtis would tell you, please remember you have to be on time. And I know that uh, Majo impacted his life, you know, in so many ways. Oh, yes. Let me go back to the telephone, though. The calls are coming, as I said. Okay, we lost that one. But someone is also saying, great program. Good morning. Listening from California. Celia Nicholas is a godsend. Thank you for having her on. Thank you, in fact, for, for having her on. I wonder if on that's Francis. Points. Um, she's Janice. Janice. She's Janice. Okay. Oh, okay. Ja I'm, mm -hmm. Yes, let's, let's take a call. Good morning. Connecting the dots. You are on. Go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Good Hi. morning. Yes, go ahead. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I am calling. I'm very, very, very proud of Mrs. Nicholas. Very proud. Imagine one of her students. And I'm representing many. Mm -hmm. We are very proud of Majo because Majo has instilled so many qualities into, I would say, every successful Dominican. Once a Dominican is doing very good for themselves, they went to community high school under Marjo's hands. <laughs> I can wow. see that. That's a bold yes. statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. And almost every student can attest to that. And we are just very happy to have her and listen to her now. We're giving mm -hmm. her all our roses. Um, Self-reliance for a better future. Indeed. Wow. Yes. I am the owner of the palace. Ah, and, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, madam. And I can say Majo, Majo is, what can I say? The peak in palace. <laughs> hey, I like that. Believe me, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So we're just saying thank mm -hmm. you. And thank you. I know I'm speaking on behalf of many. And we just love you, Majo. Thank you. The love wow. is there too. Mm -hmm. I think yes. that's what I thank survived you. Thank on. You. Wow. Nigel, I tell you, the calls are coming, the calls are coming. Let me just read this one from, from my good friend Thomas Holmes. He's saying that he's unable to call, but he really wants to congratulate Man Nicholas on being a successful educator in helping students to succeed. She is one of the most comprehensive educators that he has ever interacted with as an educator and counselor. And uh, she was uh, also comprehensive in educating, being a principal, caring and loving. Thank you, Mrs. Nicholas. God bless. Thank this you. is from from Thomas Holmes. Thank I go Mr. back to Holmes. the telephone because that's the trend this morning. He assisted me at the school yes. with, you know, when we had our troubled students yes. and I still, he's still doing it at least with Mr. John okay. Baptist being there. All right. Good Thank morning you. to you on the telephone. Yes. Good morning. Um, hi, Mrs. Nicholas. Good morning. This is Miss Carbon Juanita. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Nicholas. Um, you didn't teach me at school, but through DAT, I really want to thank you for everything that I learned from you, your leadership qualities, your professionalism, I just want to say thank you. I have learned so much in my career as a, an educator. 
and even in union, unionism, negotiations, and so on with DDT mm-hmm. as an, a member of the National Executive. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And thank I've you, Mr. So and very very good, support very good too, because yes. you know when we go into those <laughs> negotiating rooms, oh, how yes. difficult they were. Especially yes, when yes. we had to face the Minister yes. of Finance, mm. who is also the Prime Minister of Dominica, yes, you know. Yes, So yes. we had our tits and mm. so. And thank yes, you for the really support. You're most of, welcome. Don't forget Dominica Association of Catholic Teachers. Yeah, right. Okay. All of that too, because as a Catholic too. also, yes, we yes. are together. So I really want to thank you. And even in programs that I'm doing, they ask me sometimes the question, um, who do you look up to and, and why? And the last course that I did, Mrs. Celia Nicholas. And I give them all the reasons. And so I really want to thank to you. IT Dominica. Thank yes, yes miss. So Everything with the Canadian teachers with EI right. and the C U T it yes. just just name it Ivones. Mrs. Nicholas is it. Thank you, Miss. Thank Good you. program. Okay. I'm listening. Thank you, dear. Thank Nigel. I mean, that is what I'm telling Whoa. you. This is this is this is how in terms of connecting the dots. Mm-hmm. Um, not just the program, but connecting the dots amongst our people because you have the former students, you have the current ones. And I mean, the community high school is probably, you might want to say, even like your second love because you've given so much to it. Mm-hmm. And, to, and to see that your students are now calling in and giving the thank you and everything else. I know we're waiting on other calls, but what kept you going at community high school? Like, what is it about community high school mm-hmm. that you said you have to stick it out? Yeah. <laughs> this is it. And I'm a very spiritual person. I grew up and just in Cork Street, and <laughs> every day we had to go to church, whether we liked it or not. Every day or every Sunday? Right. Yes, yes, in the morning, get up 5, 6 o'clock to go to church. Mm-hmm. On the Hilma Solomon, on the, that we had to go to church on a Saturday, whether you have sins or not. Mm-hmm. And I used to say, all used to make me create sins for me to go and confess. But now that you have grown up, you, mm-hmm. see, you have a different um, sense of what sin is all about. You know? And um, I... Staying at the community high school, as a matter of fact, my entry into community high school was sort of believable. I came from doing a course in teacher education, and then when I came, that was my last course with you in teacher education. There it was that the the the, the my lecturers in Barbados sent a dossier on me, which I didn't know anything about, and it was received by the Ministry of Education. I was teaching at the convent high school then. Sister Hilda was the principal. And here it was, sister was getting a call that they want me to become principal. I didn't know anything about it. No, sister thought I knew. So I had to say, no, sister, I couldn't do that to you. You know, I, I did not. Then I'm finding out they're giving me the dossier, what, you know, they asked me. And then here it comes, and they said, well, listen, Mr. Israel, at the time, Mr. Henderson, that this, this school is looking for a principal. I say, looking for a principal? They said, no, but they, according to what the people say, you have qualities to be in leadership role, because that is what they're telling us. And I was caught. I remember my mother was there in Dominica at the time. And then I said, I don't want to leave the convent high school. I mean, what I have learned, I can't stay at the convent high school. I want to remain at the convent high school. And I can remember again the nuns, Sister Elsa, and all the others telling me, Celia, you have been educated by the state. Mm-hmm. Thus far, I must say, you know, I, my parents helped, but most of my education was by the state. And my father, being a public servant, used to say that the public service, if you have gotten from the public, from the government, you owe, you owe the citizens of Dominica something. And here it was, they say, if you cannot do it, who will do it? And then I dis- it was on the road already that was I was going to be the principal, and I had not said yes yet. I had not said yes. And then when it did come out, I decided, well, okay, let me give me a try. Give it a try. Dr. Polido was the one really who nailed. She said, listen, I know the situation. It's not going to be easy. But staying at the convent at the time, one would have never thought that we would have had a lay principal. Okay, Mrs. Levy became the lay. While I was at convent, I was on the um, administrative advisory staff, you know, in charge of sports, etc., etc. And she said, listen, you have an opportunity to go and put into practice what you have learned. And she, I remember she said that, you don't make a name for yourself. 
I said, well, okay, I will go. But I mean, you're not getting any positive vibes, you know. I visited the school. My husband then, we were caught in. He brought me to the school on a Sunday. And I stayed outside and I looked at the school. And I said, boy, boy. Then my mother was here. She said, well, listen, you're getting an opportunity. So anyway, the final decision is yours to make. And I prayed about it. And I remember Sister Hilda made me feel comfortable. She said, Celia, you, will, you, you may leave. And I want you to leave. But what I want you to remember, that you will always have a place at the convent high school. And then that, you know, and I went in and I said, I was very, I don't know if I would say it bold, but I mean, when I went in, they told me that I was going to act. And I said, act? How do you mean act? What do you, what you mean about acting? Well, I mean, this is how it is done in the service. You know, you, you, you just go into a position. <laughs> you have to act. I said to Mrs. Barron at the time, was a good friend of my father. I said, Mrs. Barron, I'm not a member of PAT. You know, that was, you know, we've all win. <laughs> and so, and she looks at me and she said, but you, she said, that's not Joseph's daughter. I said, yes, that's Celia. I said, but if I'm leaving Convent High School, we are head of department, we have this and that, and then I'm going to, I cannot be acting. Is either I'm principal or not principal? I'm sorry. And I said it to her. And I mean, I said, you know, look a few things. And here was this little upstart, you know, because I was in a position of strength. That is how I considered myself. I was not bound to come back to Dominica. I was not bound. I decided I was coming back. I was at the Convent High School. And now you're telling me, and I know my lecturers, they give us a, a sort of self-worth at UWE. You get a kind of a self-worth at UWE. And I said, listen, I'm not going to act eventually. I said, I have to be the principal of the school. Mm. And then there was, no, there was no position for me to act in because Mrs. Tong had left, you know. So, and I went in there. And I voted on Francis. <laughs> How many days in September? 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. I lost 40 pounds wow. in September of 1981. 40 pounds. And I remember once Sister Marriott came to the school. And the Catholic Church helped me a lot. Bishop Bogart was the bishop at the time. I remember my Johnson used to tell me, Valentin Johnson, come to high school, be Catholic, keep repulsive. Anything they got. <laughs> and they came to the school. Cool. And they said, I said, sister, I'm going back to the convent. I can't take it. And she said to me, Celia, if you're not going to do it, who is going to do it? So she said, I said, sister, what did you come here for this morning? She said, well, I have a word for you. So, you know, when the Catholic Church, sometimes we think Holy Spirit not working. Not true. You have to leave the church for Holy Spirit to work. That's not true. And the tears in her eyes, if another sister, she said, you've got to stay at the co community high school. And then from then, it was a no turning back. I mean, there were others who said, well, it's principal she want. Let her take principal. No, not principal she want. No, you know, you have those side. And a lot of people, I must say, I must say, they came to me and they said, Celia, when you took that job, these are the things that we said. I said, well, I did hear about them anyway, but that's not a problem. But we are just telling you we're sorry we said those things, you know. And um, I worked. I, when I entered community high school, it was, as I said, when I left the convent high school, it was living in an ivory tower. And I saw these individuals, and I don't know Mr. Wilbert Corner. Right now he has his doctorate. I had to go to the ceremony, one of my past students. His mother was working with my, my husband then. And... Um, Miss Robin, and she gave me a lot, Mrs. Julian, people I knew. And I came to the school. I remember, you know, politics have to come in it. Huh? That some of the teachers who there say, Oh, Miss Charles Senner, you see her face I had like Miss Charles own. Miss Charles Senner, her Freedom Party Senner to get rid of us. I mean, as I tell people, this is a democracy. All political parties, critical support. I mean, everybody who knows who my father was, who my stepmother is and but critical support and i did what i had to do and every stage celia there's something else you have to do celia there's something else so it was changing the image and then go not really the image but getting the children at the school to understand as they used to call them they are not rejects 
I remember where the school was located, they were dumping garbage in that area. And they had moved, after Hurricane Dave in 1979, they had moved a lot of people into Long House. Mm -hmm. And you know the names that yes, were associated yes. with it. And that was my first yeah. thing, to get the children to improve their image. Mm -hmm. And I, when, I was, when I succeeded with that, I said, okay, now we're going to academics. And then now we're going into physical structure. And he mentioned Mr. E.H. Charles. Yes, Mr. E.H. Charles. The, the people, uh, the workers at Mr. E.H. Charles would say, I don't know, I don't know. You would come and ask for something, and Mr. E.H. Charles would just say, you don't have the money? Give it to her. She'll pay. She'll pay. And Mr. E.H. Charles stayed with me supported me and even now in my private sector, my private business, he supported me and his staff. And writing projects, because that's one of the things that I learned, and I wrote projects. And when I do something, I always like to do some CIA work. So I'm not going to spend two weeks, three weeks writing a project, and then at the end of it for me to be told it's not accepted. No. If I know that's going to happen, I don't do it and have been successful in writing of projects. And every time we did a project, it was to do something else. And we worked on the children's psyche and the parents too. Because mm -hmm. what was happening when I came into the school, as soon as the train got to third form, they were sent to the St. Mary's Academy, some to the grammar school. No, I don't think any went to the convent. It's only when I came, there were some students who wanted to do certain things and I asked for the convent. So it was a matter that they would be bred, given the foundation, and then community high school would not have ripped the rewards. So when I came in, I decided there was no third, there was no fourth form, physical fourth form, no physical fifth form. So there was, <laughs> there was something which the train called a cow shed. <laughs> so I said, listen, the cow shed is going to be a classroom. And you know, right? And I said, yes, we are going to have a fourth form and we are going to have a fifth form. And I remember um, Ayub Moransi. Ayub Moransi got the first scholarship from the Scotia Bank to go and study at UWE. At that, that year, I, Ayub had a place at the St. Mary's Academy already. And when I came in and I knew the family, the family was distantly, he told his mother, listen, that lady looked like, you know, I'm going to stay at the school. So all the students who stayed at the school, David Vital, Kurt, all these people who stayed at the school, you know, in the early, early days when they could have moved out, they too were wind beneath my knees because they could have left. And I took, and Mr. Lockhart helped me very well in that because he was the principal at the grammar school subsequently, and then parents used to remove their children from the school and take them to the grammar school. And he put a stop to it. Mm. He said, listen, Mrs. Nicholas is doing a good job. At the time I was still Miss Joseph, you know, let your children remain there. And I thank Mr. Lockhart for that, you know. Um, the SMA, at one time, they, they used to bleed my school, the SMA, but I've forgiven them for that. Mm. I've forgiven them for that, you know. But um, the grammar, Mr. Lockhart assisted me very, very well in sustaining the numbers at the school. And Nigel, what the a physical, story. we did not have a hall. We did not have science. So my last project I did with the CDB just before I left. That was done, well, since before. Erica, well, it has been open not to my satisfaction, mm -hmm. I have to say. But I see this school as complete now. You know, it has its um, hall. It has a science department. It has a place for the children to, to learn free if they want to dance, if they want to sing, etc. You have the agricultural department. You have the, the greenhouses. And I feel fulfilled that I can let go. And I always told my staff, listen, I run the school as do. When I leave here, it is my last day. Mm. And I want you to prepare yourself to take over. No advertisement going to come principal needed at community high school. No. So the next principal has to come from within you. Prepare yourself. And they did. And as I said, when I was interviewed by Lelo, one of my students working with you, that 
I boast. I mean, I wasn't prepared for the interview when she called me because I just got new and the wind was, and it was a well kept secret. And she said, Miss, you have to talk to me. I say, Yes, Lila, I want to talk to you first. Curtis is out of it now, but you will get that interview. And I said, It just came out. And my teacher said, Miss, did you realize what you say? I said, This is the perfect example of succession planning. And I'm saying it with comfort now. I'm comfortable with who is there, the staff is there, and the school is running. And so, you know, individuals will say, well, when I go, all you will see, all you will see. I tell, I tell, I all, I hear people say that. And I say, do not say that because it means that you did not prepare a leader. And I say that about one of the political <laughs> parties. Eh? I had a strong leader. And there was not preparation. So what has happened? The party has died. I don't want the Dominica Community High School to die. And I don't, I don't want anyone to go through what I went through at the Community High School to go through that. So I feel very satisfied now. Hmm. I, I, you know, people don't understand. They see me and they say, Miss, you look so... I feel very satisfied now that I have fulfilled what maybe God said I had to do. And I'm getting little, little things, oh, you're not finished yet, you're not finished yet. But I feel very satisfied. Human changing human lives. And seeing, I, I think maybe I'm seeing my great-grandchildren now in education, you know? Mm. And they call Marju. I say, oh, who give you permission to call me Marju? You Please, you know? And we make fun out of it. But this is what kept me, because every time we made progress, there was more progress coming. There was more progress and different individuals, as I say, you know, from the Ministry of Education, I mean, from the word go, I remember Mr. Vernon Shaw, Mrs. Shaw, Mr. Vernon Shaw was, um, I think, at the CAP, Chief Establishment Officer at the time, and I went to him as a non-government school. I mean, there were certain things we could not have gotten. But again, with my friendship and my relationship mm -hmm. with them, and I said, listen, this is not South Africa. It is a school. And it's Dominican children. So I need assistance. And I always used to remind, remind them, listen, I was at the convent high school, you know, and you all came to call me. So please, you know, yes, sir. Mr. Henderson, Mr. <laughs> Israel, you know, Mr. Maynard, all these individuals assisted. And uh, Mrs. Um, what's her name again? She's Burton, but she's Harris now, Frances Harris, you know. These people mm. supported me in my strides at the Dominica Community High School. So many names to call. My friends, Dr. Cleopatra, Mrs. D I mean, that was the clique at the convent high school. Mrs. Dublin, Melinda Joseph, she has not returned to Dominica. Lucia Blaise, I mean, Miss Matthew, Curtis Cousin, Verly Shaw. We remain friends through it all. And they supported me through it all. I mean, community high school got monies, got things, etc. And they don't know where it came from. I mean, I'd, I had individuals, and I can call at least two past students now, Solomon and Margaret. These students, when they left school, every month in an envelope, no matter how small it is, there was something for the Dominica Community High School. You have Mona Luino. Harnessing all the students now, I hope you know they're going to have a big reunion. And so long, I mean, two individuals have died. Curtis has Curtis tried to do that, but poor soul, he died before he saw. That is Mr. Jerry Cooper, brother. He died before he saw the realization. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's in heaven and he's looking down. And I really hope that all the efforts that the present um, group is putting into it come to fruition in August that they're going to do it. So I, you know, and when I look back, you see all what the, the, the students are telling me, yes, as human, you accept it. But it is deeper than that. It's touching the lives of individuals. And as I tell people, I carry a lot of secrets. You see inside of you, a lot, a lot of secrets for my past students, from the convent high school, from the community high school. And there's some of them who were hurt as children and as students. And they confided in me. And then we worked it out. And to see where they have gone is a lot.
Nigel Francis, it is 11 o'clock. Yes. Um, the calls are still coming. The messages are coming. Um, we have to end. And uh, we have not even really touched. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we touched a lot. But there's so no, many some, other things. Someone like, someone like, someone like Celia, mm -hmm. Joseph, Nicholas, Maju, mm -hmm. Educated++++, plus, 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 deserves a second part. I but mean. of course. Because we haven't touched on so many Nigel, things. I tell you, the calls, all, all, all the, the, the phones. Yeah, we just... haven't touched on the church association. We yeah. haven't touched on a yearly annual independence commentator. Yep. We haven't touched on a sporting activities. And there's so many others who want to say thank you to her. Mm -hmm. Part two. Part two. Book it. But of course, this is just, this is a story that we really need at this time. I know when we started the program, Nigel, we were looking at the challenges that confront us. And we have so many challenges. This nation now is wondering what is happening to this 12-year-old girl. And there's so many things going on that creates hurdles and problems for us. But we are listening to this story from Celia Nicholas Majo, and I am inspired. I know she has inspired a lot of people. But Majo, even before you leave, I want to find out who inspires you these days. I know you mentioned so many friends. But, but who do you really look up to at, at, in, in these times? First of all, as I said, and I know I'm we don't have much time. Maybe yes, we have I'm just a about very two minutes. spiritual person, and um, my graces come from above. And I, I have a, a good prayer partner, Mrs. I, Mrs. Tyson. I know this lady prays for me a lot, and um, I have my husband who has been at my side through it all, and my two children, Adrian and Adin. Adrian is a computer programmer in the States. Adin is a medical doctor. And they too push me. As I said, all my friends are dealing with day to share the convent prep, you know, and my, my past students to see Ian James, when Dr. Ian James and they tell their stories and Dr. Brent Theophile and Dr. I mean, these are people who went to the community high school, okay? Mm -hmm. And Dr. Wilbert Corner. And as I said, all my people, you see, the, the Cork Street gang, you know, I was like a queen and still yet, you know, and you see, I go in Cork Street, you know, and everybody look up to me. And being the first grandchild, I think I was privileged in that sense. And I thank God for the experience that, I, that I've had and the support that I got from as you said, we haven't spoken about DAT. You know, when I, I was given the leadership of DAT, I had Mrs. Johnson, these people, Carol Acteville, Mr. Jerry Coppell, Isabella Prentice, Clifford Parillo, I mean, Selenville, Francis John Lewis, even the, 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 um, at the, the, the Harriet, Harriet know what she is, Vanya Martin, Rosman Roll, and I mean, the list went, goes on, you know? And as you yeah. said... So as I'm saying, my main, and of course, my spirituality is very important to me. And as I always tell people, stay close to God. Stay close to God. And with this situation that we are going through, I think we need to be careful what we pray for. As I'm saying, it is God's will. It is God's will. If it's God's will that this child comes out from the situation alive, hmm, okay, I suppose he will provide what is needed for her to do what she has to do because maybe he has something for her to do. And if he takes her, as I told somebody, I would like her to be my angel, one of my angels. Because all of the people, as I said, I've had many angels. They have archangels among them, but I wouldn't say, you know, mm -hmm. many angels. And... It is just a symptom that we have to go down deep into and to cleanse. As I see, many things which are happening in Dominica now, we are too small. The human resource is not there. And right now, our human resource, we have to take care of our human resource in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Those in that diaspora, we need to assist you. You need, we need your assistance. We need you in whatever way. And um, I think sometimes when they come down, they expect too much, and so people get disappointed. They get dissatisfied, and they leave. But remember, this little rock made you what you are. 
the Commonwealth of Dominica. So you owe big time to this little rock. As I said, I, I could be elsewhere, but I chose to remain in the Commonwealth of Dominica. And as Antiguan say, me na watch, me na bang water to come here. All right. Nigel, let's close. And um, yes. as we said, part two. Very, yes, very part soon. two definitely has to be on, mm -hmm. on, on the books because we have so much more that we have to yeah. uncover. But let me say thank you to you, Zilia. Let me say thank you so much to you for being part of Connecting the Dots and making that connection from preschool all the way to where you are today and to all the students who passed through the halls of Community High School. I know mm -hmm. that they would have wanted to say thank you to you. And I'm pretty sure they'll get the opportunity. But thanks for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you so much, Celia Nicholas. As I said, we have a lot of messages still coming in, but um, in part two, we'll look at all of that. But there are a lot of people who are just saying thank you. Thank you. I thank you so you. much. Thank you. Nigel, we'll do it again. I think there's a press briefing that uh, we have to bring live sometime at about 11.30. But before that, I will join Dr. Miggs Labadee and the Saturday Vibes continue. But I really enjoyed today's program, Nigel. Positive vibes. Positive Gave vibes. us a nice positive you know, oh, yeah. beginning yeah. for the rest of the day. All right. Thank you. All right. Lovely Celia Nicholas. We'll Thank talk again. Dear. All right. Okay, then. That's it on Connecting the Dots on DBS Radio. And we are very happy that we could have Celia Nicholas as our guest this morning. Celia Nicholas has done so much and continues to do a lot, not just for education, in uh, various other sectors trend for a woman, a phenomenal woman at that. That's it. Join us next week, God willing, for another program on Connecting the Dots. Thanks all of you who tuned in and who are still sending messages.